a senior research fellow at the Global Policy Institute, and he joins us live from Saint Malo in France. Uh, good to have you on the program. Then, so first of all, uh, before we sort of start analysing, I want to get your initial reaction to the national rally coming out in front with this big 34% of the vote. Shock, fear. It's an unprecedented result. Uh, never before has the National Front, the far right, come close to getting to power. And uh, it's a gamble that uh, Macron took that really backfired, I think. It really is a very bad result for him. He thought that maybe uh, for European election, people would just van their spleen. It was a just a dissatisfaction with him. When, but when faced with the prospect of a national front, a right, a very far right government, people would think twice and uh, would probably vote for more reasonable parties. But as was seen, what the figure that shocks me most. It's not just the proportion of voters, which is the same as uh, as it was at the European election, but the number of votes. Close to 12 million French people voted for the national rally before their top score in parliamentary election was just above 4 million. So they nearly trebled their votes. They got more votes this time than uh, Macron's party uh, in the first round of the last election. So, yes, it is... Uh, a disaster for Macron, and I personally think, not everyone <laughs> thinks the same, but I uh, personally think it's a disaster for France. Uh, just the only way now that uh, Macron, his supporters and the left uh, uh, can react is by limiting the damage, preventing the national rally from getting an outright majority. Would they really be a disaster for France, though? I mean, they do have a wide base of new support, you could say. So what are they offering, this, this new wave of supporters then? What is it in their policies that has attracted so many people to them? <laughs> it's very difficult to say. It's certainly not. I mean, initially, uh, the National Front appealed to working class people there because they had a very left wing economic policy, you know, back to pension at 50, at 60, uh, increasing wages, increasing uh, minimum wage, all types of things, all types of promises. But as the campaign has been developing and as they've seen their potential of winning rising, they've abandoned most of their kind of left-wing policies and instead have concentrated on what is their stock in trade. Their core business is racism and discrimination and immigration. Each time they, uh, they are have to address the question, which is whether it's social or economic, they always put the blame on uh, on the uh, on immigration. As far as far as the enemy is concerned, they have to abandoned saying the excuse they use is to say, ah, but we need an audit. We're not, not sure about the figures of France. So before we adopt economic policies, we will uh, we will have to study the situation very clearly. So they're not making any promise. And for that, for a very good reason, is that they want to appeal to the right-wing people, such as the right-wing Republicans, such as Eric Ciotti, who share the values of uh, the National Front, uh, i.e., uh, let's say, anti-Islam, uh, thinking that France is being overrun and immigration so, so, is... A so, Jacques, if I may... Um, don't share the economic views. So, Jacques, if I may, would you say that the mask is now slipping, that they're going to lurch back towards uh, what we know them to have been in the past um, as a national front, which was a party that was essentially racist and xenophobic? Oh, no, no, instead, they will have to broaden their view, but they it won't be as out right. We'll see uh, in, uh, coming, uh, in the coming months which type of policies. First, we need to know which type of majority they have. It's not done. Uh, the, game is not, the game is not over. They're not sure to have an absolute majority. At this stage, uh, they said they could have between 255 and 295. And in the second round of the election, there will be many triangular situations. There's about over 200 seats which are triangular. And the left has decided that if, as, as far as the far left of Michel uh, Mélenchon to withdraw if they come third, 
and support the majority, the outgoing majority, we have to say, candidate, and in order to beat the national front. So a Republican front is being uh, created on the spot. As far as the Republicans are concerned, it's not so sure whether they will uh, uh, withdraw uh, to favor a left-wing candidate. I doubt it. Many will want that. And actually, uh, many will probably be ready to make a deal with uh, the National Front if they think it can guarantee a place and their majority. But in that case, they would have to, uh, if they have to ally with the uh, right-wing Republicans, they would have to have a very uh, right-wing, uh, liberal economic policy and tone down their rhetoric, but at the same time, we'll see if they're trying to, you know, it's, it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. They're trying to Indeed. appear very nice. But well, listen, no, there are many games are, um, still to be played, I'm sure, will, ahead of that second round will, runoff. Um, but Jacques Crelland, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us for your analysis on our program tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.